Welcome to Vatican 6. I'm your host, Titan. Let's get to it. Homicide investigators are still looking into what or who caused the death of a seven-year-old boy in spring. Deputies found Troy Kohler's body inside a washing machine. Adam Bennett live outside the home. Adam, no arrests or charges at this point. Not at this point, Ron. The parents of Kohler went downtown with investigators for an interview a while ago. They haven't come back to the home since then. Investigators, they would not tell us whether there were any signs of physical injury on the body of the boy. They did tell us, though, it's too early to say whether this is an accident. As crime scene investigators continued combing through this home on Rosegate Drive in spring this afternoon. It hit me because it hit him. Kenyetta Hewitt brought her son to leave this toy in remembrance of his friend, seven-year-old Troy Kohler. I'm hurting. Um, my baby, he's hurting. You know, um, he holds things in, internalizes a lot. So whatever I felt like it took for him to get the closure that he needs, even before school starts, I was willing to do. Deputy constables found Kohler's body inside this top load washing machine inside his home's garage. Investigators wouldn't say whether there was water inside or the lid was closed. They did say the boy was clothed. This all started when Kohler's parents reported him missing around 520 this morning. There was no indication that the door had been open or window open. And after searching the neighborhood, they were unable to find the child. So the next logical step, I believe, was just to search the house. That's when HCSO homicide unit got called out. They separated and detained the parents, which is standard. I've got grand, great grandkids and I, I mean, I don't know how they're coping with it. A spokesperson with the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services told me, quote, I can confirm that CPS does have history with the family and that the child had been a foster child and was adopted in 2019. Hopefully that, you know, everybody gets the closure that they need. Officials with Spring ISD, where Kohler went to school, released a statement to me. They said they are deeply saddened by the young boy's passing. They also said they're offering prayers to his family, as well as counseling for any students and staff that may need it. Ron and Rekha. That story beyond being horrible. Thank you so much, Adam, for that report. The latest on this heartbreaking story from Spring, where a seven-year-old boy was found dead in a washing machine. This was after his parents reported him missing yesterday morning. Rochelle Turner uh, live with, with what the boy's adoptive father told us late last night when he arrived home. Rochelle. Good morning. Jermaine Thomas spoke briefly with us after he was questioned by authorities and dropped off at this home behind me by a precinct four deputy constable. Now he told us when he got to the home around midnight on Wednesday, the door was already unlocked. This is Troy Kohler's adoptive dad, Jermaine Thomas. He says he came home after work yesterday around midnight looking for his wife, and the door was already unlocked. Just like I'm from the walking in the door right now. I'm from, I don't have my keys, but I put my key in the door and then the door open. But anything else after that, I don't know. Jermaine says Troy wasn't in the house, and around 5.30 that morning, the seven-year-old was reported missing. Deputies searched the neighborhood before they made the horrific discovery. At that point, they found a deceased seven-year-old child in the washing machine in the garage. Troy's mom and dad were questioned by authorities. No charges have been filed, but how did Troy end up in the washing machine? His condition and cause of death remain under investigation. I just don't know how it happened. The Department of Family and Protective Services confirmed the couple adopted Troy in 2019. He also attended Jenkins Elementary School. And Spring ISD says his death represents a great loss for our district. And we are providing ongoing counseling and grief services for students and staff members impacted by this tragedy. And so many questions surrounding this investigation. Today, we're hoping to learn a little bit more about what happened to little Troy. As soon as we found out, found out find out more information, we'll be sure to let you know. Reporting live from Spring this morning, I'm Rochelle Turner, KPRC 2 News. Let's talk about it. Who was at the house with the kid? Now, they said he didn't have any other siblings. And the dad said he came home 
which was stated in the video, around 12, stuck his key in the door and the door opened wide open. So, during the press conference, the police said, the officer said, that they noticed that the kid was missing around 4.30 in the morning and that police or something arrived at 5.30 or something to that effect. So the dad got there at 12. What did he do for that whole four hours or four and a half hours? Because it seems to me that the washing machine would have had to been closed for him not to notice it when he went in the garage that the machine was open and yeah, by the way, I'm just not going to look in her unless he just assumed that the kid couldn't fit in her. It's hard for me to believe that they could not find their own kid in their house. That's really the strange part about it to me. Let's talk about top loading washing machines. In my research, I found they come in two types. Top loading machines with an agitator and top loading machines without an agitator. We'll start our journey on top loading machines with agitators. There are very few seven year olds who could fit inside of a washing machine with an agitator. Now, possibly some of them could stand in there and it would still be uncomfortable for them to stand in there. But to stand in there and be able to close the lid is a chore. And most seven-year-olds, due to their height and weight, quite simply, can't pull off this achievement. Now, the average height of a seven-year-old is between four, it's around four feet eight, four feet eight inches. That's the average height. So let's say that this kid was at least four feet inches tall. We're going to just minus the eight inches. Just say he was four feet. He couldn't have stood in the machine without swatting and made himself fit. And with the agitator in there, that would have made it extremely difficult, almost if not impossible, for him to fit in there. In most cases, seven-year-olds are either afraid, too afraid, or too tall to close the lid as they stand in washing machines that are top-loading with agitators. There is no room for a kid to swat in a top loading machine because of this agitator. Let's talk about the kid laying or constricting his body to fit inside the machine. The odds of a child climbing on top of the machine and putting him or herself inside the machine with an agitator, I believe in my opinion, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. ORP to the kid, he would have had to been a gymnast who is double jointed in all of his body to put himself in there. The key thing, the key phrase is to put himself in there. If the child is laying facing the agitator, which is facing the inside of the machine, there would not be enough room for the lower part of his body, mainly his knees and legs. If the child is laying facing the wall or the outer inside of the washing machine, he would have the same exact issues with his legs. In addition, now his back and spine would have a ton of pressure because we aren't to mend, we aren't made to bend back and at such an extreme radius in such a tight space. Here is the inside of an agitator, a machine with an agitator to the left, and machine and a machine without an agitator to the right. As you notice, the machine with the agitator, and I would assume both of them, have small uh, lips at the top of them. The entrance of the machines are smaller than the actual inside. So if the child was laying facing the agitator, he would not be able to fit, laying on his side. Any other way you put him in there, he wouldn't fit unless you pushed him in there or put him in there. Upside down, standing up, it would be a squeeze. He would hurt himself. So you mean to tell me that the child got in the machine, Swords down in an uncomfortable position that possibly hurt it and then closed the lid and stayed in there until he could no longer breathe or until someone turned on the water and he didn't make a noise. Impossible. 
Now let's go to the right. Now the top loading machines, the ones without the agitator, share the, the, the very same issues, lack of space. For a seven year old to lay sideways in, it's impossible. The only difference here is the child could get inside, swat while closing the lid. That still doesn't explain the child's death. Some kids have a fear of tight spaces, especially tight, dark spaces, as the washer would be if the child closed the lid on himself. I think we need more information, such as, was there water in the machine? And I think if we watch one of the videos closely, the one where they're actually putting the machine, it's on the dolly and they're loading it in the back of the truck, I think you can see a drop of water come out of the machine, the bottom of the machine. I think the machine was loaded and I'm almost sure that the lid had to be closed. These are all assumptions on my part, but I believe there are assumptions based on logic, good logic. Has the child ever ran away to where no one could find him? Once more information comes out, I believe that the possible causes of death are going to either be suffocation by lack of oxygen, suffocation of some form of lack of oxygen, or the child drowned. That it was some form of drowning. As I stated, there are some kids, extremely small seven-year-olds, that might be able to can construe their body to fit inside the machine with no agitator. There might even be some kids that can construe their body to fit inside the one with an agitator. They're not going to stay in there. It's uncomfortable. It's no way that there were, a kid is going to hurt itself by doing something that it voluntarily wanted to do. I'm going to get in this machine. I know it hurt my legs. I know it's hurting my arms. But hey, this is fun. And I'm going to stay in here for hours until I die. Or somebody turn on the water. This is a fun high go see. No. That did not happen. That's not what the little kid did. If he got in there, he didn't stay in there on purpose. So I'm not saying that he wasn't afraid and tried to hide in the machine. But that still means what was he afraid from? That still leaves the question, what was he afraid from? Why did he feel the need to hide in the machine if he put himself in there? But he damn sure didn't turn on the water. He for sure didn't turn on the water himself. And I'm almost sure he wouldn't have left himself in there. Maybe someone held the top down and that's how he died from suffocation. So if he did get in there himself and he has no bruises, someone held that top down so he couldn't get out. If he has bruises or any more, they forced him in there. But the thing is this. If it's a drowning, that means someone started the machine with him in there. So they never opened the lid to add liquid, if it's those type of machines where you have to add it in the, the top of the machine. They never put clothes in there or worried about the clothes or what color the clothes were. They just started the machine, which seems highly unlikely. And if it was clothes in there, that adds an extra problem. How would he fit? Even if it wasn't a full load, it reduces the already tight space that he has to constrict his, his body to fit in it. And if we're talking about the one with the agitator, he has even less room. It seems very strange to me how the dad said he stuck his key in the door, the door came wide open. Is that normally what happens? The police officer said during the press conference that the mother still had on her work uniform. So was she already home at 12, didn't go to work because they couldn't find him? Or had she already been to work, but still kept on her work uniform the following morning? Seems to make no sense to me. Seems to be highly suspicious on the parents' part. And I think that this is exactly what they 
the homicide investigators are investigating. I believe it's a homicide. I believe allegedly that the parents are responsible in some way, form, or shape. I find it hard to believe that this kid would put himself in a machine and allow someone to fill it up without making a sound. He got in the machine and he fell asleep. And as they was filling the machine up with water, he never woke up. Doesn't sound believable. From the size of this kid, being four feet, the average size of a seven-year-old, four feet eight. It seems impossible that he could put himself in that machine. Either one of them. I think this case will definitely be solved. I do not think that this was an accident. I think that machine was filled up while that kid was in there. And the only way that he could be in there and stay in there while it's filling up See if he was knocked out before he went in there or somehow he was drugged and unconscious, but it was some form of unconsciousness. This is Vatican 6. I'm your host, Titan, and I'm gone.